talking bench press for some reason. I don't know why. Nobody likes bench press, but we have to do it, so we have to speak about it. But um, I am just gonna go through a quick big three of bench, which uh, are the big rocks of bench in my opinion, but I mean, they're, they're, they're super broad. I haven't tried to make them super deep because um, it's just not gonna open up much chat. This one, I'm going to chat you for that. So, um, bench press is a weird one. The other two lifts, I really concentrate on staying stacked, as I call it. Rib cage over pelvis, make for a good brace, get those diaphragms aligned, um, get that pressure, that internal pressure uh, happening. Get it, hold our stiff uh, position through the lift. Bench press, we're still doing it, but we're in a way different position. It's the only lift where I will actually cue to not do that. Uh, we want to flare up as big through this through the rib cage, push it forward in space, inhale through the front, get it nice and tall, um, and then through the rest, same through the hips. Purposely doing that through the hips, getting tight on the bench, using the bench as our uh, as our platform to to do that from. And it uh, yeah, so it differs wildly in that way, and it um, it makes for a weird weird lift as far as we go, as far as humans go. And uh, that comes with some funky different things to it. But big three bench anyway, I'll get to it. Uh, my first one, and it's pretty, these are all pretty obvious. If you, if, it's just that I want to speak about it and draw some questions out and stuff. So um, do it frequently. Do it frequently. Get it done multiple times a week. Um, if you come from a bodybuilding background or if you come from a, um, well, most people start in the bodybuilding-esque background, it's going to be, you know, chest day or something like that um, once a week. Thankfully, those bodybuilding times are even changing as well. Bodybuilders are getting a little bit better with frequency and whatnot. Um, but bench press, for the most part, is going to require a bit more work, a bit more volume, um, and splitting it up into different days um, with perhaps different intents depending on uh, uh, what level of lift you're at is going to be is going, to, is going to help bench press a lot. I would do them in different rep ranges for the most part, not wildly different. Again, subject to uh, timing of comp, timing of uh, around your life, things like that. Um, if you're pushing a lot of volume, if you're not, if you need to work on weak points, things like that, uh, I would mix up the variations, I would mix up the rep ranges, I would do differently like that, but, but general rule of thumb, do it frequently, do it a lot. Uh, it's, it seems to, over the other lifts, respond to uh, that higher, more frequent practice of the lift. Not going deep in these. Number two, get jacked. Um, <laughs> seems, seems pretty straightforward. Seems like that should be a rule of all the lifts, but with bench press especially, it's the only one you're gonna walk into, nah, worlds, whatever, commercial gyms, and see, Big dudes throwing around huge weights with not probably the best technique, but they're throwing around huge weights just because they're huge. Guys, get jacked shoulders, get jacked pecs, get jacked triceps. I try to tick those off. Uh, the pecs don't want to come. Need a bit of work there still. Get the flies going again. Um, I like pec decks, but then I don't have one obviously at home and I'm not going to get one for home. Um, I need to get better at just accepting that uh, other fly variations are going to work for me and do them here, but... I don't know, I just like pec deck. Anyway, get jacked, focus on hypertrophy, give hypertrophy a focus, don't spend your year working around hitting just constant heavy reps, you're going to beat things up, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to, you're not going to give hypertrophy the focus at an easy, in my opinion, strength and hypertrophy are going to come together, they're, they're looking at, they're, it's not like you switch, your, switch uh, flip a switch, and it's like one or the other, they both come together to some degree, but your periodization, your plan, your yearly model, your six monthly model, your three yearly, whatever it is, your long-term plan should uh, go through phases. You should be biasing one or the other more, more or less. Um, you know, you can get, you can get hypertrophy of fives, you can get hypertrophy of tens, you can get hypertrophy of fifteens, you get hypertrophy of all these rep ranges. We know this, um, but obviously there are pros and cons to each rep range. There are pros and cons to uh, when you do them. So I would definitely plan it out long term so you can get through all these. And I, like I said, I would still mix it up throughout a week, but 
there's a time and place um, for doing these higher reps and it isn't two weeks up from comp. So I've just missed a heap of questions, but I think there's a button where I can go back and look. Anyway, number three, before I answer those questions, um, happy, healthy shoulders. Keep them happy, keep them healthy. This happened, this ties in that periodization model again. If you're slamming heavy weights, if you're slamming frequently, really specific bench work all year round, you're gonna end up with little pec issues, you're gonna end up with this position, you're gonna end up with uh, um, things that come with that, problems that come along with that. Um, get it, mix things up, change it throughout a year, give you time, dedicate it towards high pressure, dedicate it towards strength, periodize it in a smart way. <sighs> so many things that come along with this. Um, I am going to be talking about long-term success in my Rebel Performance Summit uh, presentation, so come watch that. I'm not gonna be talking about bench press in particular, but just generally overall, that's where that uh, planning stuff is gonna come in. But for the most part, happy, healthy shoulders, keep them happy, uh, move in different directions, have time of year where you go through different ranges, overhead, here, inclines, if you can't get that, or if you don't have the shoulder flexion or the movement needed to get there, move. Just make sure you have open ranges. Uh, when it comes to, you know, this is tight or that's tight, when, when you start to focus in on muscles and, and start to uh, zoom too far in as far as that goes, it's, it's hard to measure. It's hard to measure. It's hard to go like, oh, my pec's tight, that's the problem. I mean, like, that's just a subjective feeling. How do we measure that with a lot of lab equipment that nobody's gonna have? You're better off measuring joint range of motions uh, that you can test, retest after you do drills uh, so that you can assign drills that actually work. So you can go measure this range, measure that range, measure this range, measure that range, measure this range, measure that range. Um, measure them, test them side to side, Get somebody who knows that can do that properly because uh, just testing them alone is, is quite difficult on yours by yourself. Um, and learn drills that actually work for you um, that improve that before and after. Um, so that's a quick little side skirt on keeping happy, healthy shoulders because happy, healthy shoulders is gonna lead to that getting jacked and bent, doing bench frequently or allow you to do that. Now there are heaps of questions, so I'm gonna scroll up because apparently you can ask a question separately and you can just put it as a comment. I thought they were the same thing. First question though, right at the start, before I even started talking about anything and I was just talking about myself and I was being boring like that. Um, do you use isometrics? Uh, no. <laughs> no in terms of for bench press as in like, um, well, I mean, yeah, I do. I use pauses, things like that. But uh, in, in that sense, but isometrics in the way that probably most people think about it these days in terms of uh, those specific drills for specific posi uh, positions, no, not in, not in the way that I would uh, program an isometric for most people like uh, to get better at holding a position or whatever. It's, uh, I will put them in some people's warm-ups or pre-session work um, to help stabilize a range or get better at holding a range or to own a range or whatever you want to call it. But for uh, for me personally, not really other than, like I said, like, like pause work, whatever if you want to call that. Uh, thoughts on using uh, bands against bench from DAC. Dakota's got a strong bench, so should listen to her, but I don't use bands. Um, she doesn't use bands unless she's doing it without my permission. Um, and I don't really program it for anyone else, um, purely because I don't expect, f first from a, just a, uh, expecting everybody to have bands and chains or whatever, a common resistance uh, available is unrealistic. I'm, I'm, I try to make it as easy for everybody to follow when I'm programming. Um, I don't expect people to go and buy them. Um, so just that, and then the ease of me not having to swap it out. It's going to be number one there, so practicality. But second of all, it's just, just uh, I don't see the point. I think most people, just like I said in the deadlift one early last week, um, most people need to learn how to bench press. Most people need to learn how to deadlift. Most people need to learn how to do this stuff correctly. Uh, and unless somebody has their bench press technique um, down perfect, or well, I'm, when I say perfect, obviously it's perfect, but really good, uh, and they're learning to hold tension, they're learning to do all that stuff as, as good as I want it. Um, then we can start chucking that stuff. 
bench I will use a bit more variation than the other lifts um, but uh, bends no I've used other things um, I, I'm not against it I just uh, it's just not something I use um, what is your main cue you think about when executing your bench uh, I mean it changes right and it should change it should change over time um, and, and as, as you get better at things as you kind of forget other things as you as you kind of just change I get bigger smaller uh, things like that different times of the year these cues are going to change the things I focus on are going to change um, but when I'm finally if I put myself in the position of just getting like I'm getting under that bar it's getting heavy whatever it's it's most of my cues are in my setup as in getting tight my setup you know uh, kicking into the floor getting those quads on driving that that pressure back up towards my upper back up towards my neck trying to get heavy through that area um, obviously holding retraction back and down through shoulder blades squeezing the crap out of that bar with my hand um, things like that once I've already got all that cued once I've already got all that on I'm gonna just hold that I'm just gonna hold it somebody's gonna unrack it for me because I'm really shit at unracking it in the position that I get that big ass position really hard to do this um, so I'll get all those kind of out of the way first and then it's just gonna be if I'm actually thinking about the cues that I'm thinking about when I coach when I when I lift myself uh, it's gonna be yeah, getting in all that position, get the cues more of getting in position and then it's going to be touching in the same spot, honestly. I'm, I'm not thinking about trying to twist my elbows in or twist my elbows out. I kind of let that happen based on my position. I'm just focusing on touching on the same point. Um, and that's through my warm-ups, through my main, through my top set, through my third attempt at the comp. So it doesn't really change um, for me. Uh, there have been a lot of other things I've had to focus on in the past. There have been a lot of things like based on position. I've tried out all that stuff that I said I don't do. I've tried out the twisting the elbows in, you know, bend the bar, pull the bar apart, all that crap. For me, just squeezing the crap out of the bar, touching, focusing on where I'm going to touch, gets the job done for me. Um, let the body do what it's good at, and uh, and that's that's where I'm at these days. Thoughts on wearing belt stream bench press. Um, I did a video, a YouTube video on, on belts last week, and I mentioned in that that I out of the out of the um, out of the lifts, I don't really I see a benefit for most people. Um, I'm not against it if it helps a person's bench, but for the most part, I'm encouraging people to get more arch, more focus on their position, and a belt, for the most part, is uncomfortable for most people, and uh, I don't really... Um, I'm not going to push somebody towards it unless they've just... Like, they like it already. I... I I, I think there are bigger things to focus on when it comes to bench press. Bench, bench. You don't need that that stack as I talked about at the start of this video. You don't. It's the only lift we're encouraging people to really extend and to not kind of not get uh, these big ab musculature on. So I mean, it a belt for most people. I don't think is necessary. What's your favourite variation you like to use in the off season? Ah, uh, incline. Uh, and a feet up bench just because if you think about my position uh, I use quite a big arched setup pretty short range of motion really wide grip all that crap because um, I'm a cheater and what I do to uncheat my bench press is those variations so incline um, get a bit more range of motion flat feet up bench get a bit flatter um, get a bit more range again again that's my way of putting a little bit more emphasis on hypertrophy putting a little bit um, less emphasis on on being like so jarred up in that end range positions that uh, are good for one RMs but aren't really good for for moving and for for um, for keeping I guess healthy or long-term progress it's a very easy position to overdo so I keep away from it people just laughing at me fucking it up awesome earlier with <laughs> figuring out these questions uh, do I use linear or block periodization or another form <sighs> I really focus on it I really need to be like oh I'm going to do linear now or I'm going to do this now or I'm going to do this form now um, periodization is a plan it's a long-term plan. 
Um, and I'm thinking more other things like, a, uh, like, a, like if when we think periodization um, in terms of that, to that, the linear block, whatever it is, we're thinking mostly the variables like volume, intensity, specificity, um, even periodization of health, things like that. Um, so it's not so much the exact structure I worry about, it's just pushing uh, those variables in the right direction for my goal at that, at that particular time, whether it's hypertrophy, whether it's competition, whether it's health, whether it's all that stuff and the exact model or um, kind of structure that I use changes um, and is probably, if you think about it, going to incorporate all of them into one. It's not like I'm going to go like, oh yeah, I think block period this would work really well right now. It's they're, they're, I think when you start to think like that too much, it just gets uh, it just gets confusing. And um, yeah, you shouldn't you shouldn't need to to think about it in that way. Just uh, find a program that works. Um, there are lots out there to give you a kind of idea. Pick the you know the volume, the frequency, intensity the exercises they're specific towards your goal uh, and focus on your recovery, balance them out, measure, uh, manage and manipulate things to keep moving forward. It's, I know, I know that's, that's a really broad answer that doesn't really specifically answer any questions, but I'm not focusing on those things. I've never thought like, oh, I'm gonna ch like use this periodization type. It's, I, I just think a, a, a line of thought that isn't necessary. Hi, Drad. This is Drad's shout out for everybody. Drad has told me that I need to shout him out. Um, he is a bodybuilder, so he should not be on this live, but um, we'll shout him out anyway. We'll give him that. This is about bench press and, and bodybuilders do do bench press, so um, he, can, <laughs> he can have a shout out this time. And he is a good guy. He once, he once stopped a robbery, in pro was it a robbery? It was a robbery. It was a robbery in progress. Save the day. Pretty much Superman. <sighs> Superman's maybe a bit too far. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Having a big bench arch cheating um, from Jade, who I literally just before this live sent her a message and said, she's a cheater because she had a big arch. And that's cheating. Um, but as we know, arching isn't cheating uh in powerlifting our goal is to lift a one rm and to the rules of competition and whatever whatever uh, method we use that accomplishes that ticks all those boxes makes the judges happy makes them give you those white lights is uh is not cheating and uh should definitely be used um the people that uh, are out there and going like, oh yeah, big arches are cheating, man, fucking bullshit, are usually people that we don't give a fuck about anyway. Usually um, gym bros, usually bodybuilders, usually guys that aren't judged uh, in competition, 1RMs with the white lights like we are. Um, so I mean, I don't care what they think, uh, I'm just going for those white lights and I'm going for the max weight on the bar. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I think it just comes from a place of them trying to bump their ego up or whatever. They give them a reason why they're weaker than you, maybe. I don't know. But um, anybody that's... It's just like the sumo deadlift thing, right? Sumo's cheating because of why it's... Try and do it. Try and do it and tell me how much cheating it is. Same thing with the bench arch. All right, you get a really good bench arch. If you can get a really good bench arch, I've never met a person that can... Um, the, that is, is not going to use it just because out of some sort of moral thing. It's just uh, the people that aren't that that are going to that are that are going to say it's cheating are the ones that can't do it. Do bench press arch. I like it. Down further, can you talk about keeping sets and reps the same during mesos for hypertrophy versus adding loads of reps sets uh, and when or why to use either? Um. First of all, both work. Uh, it's not to say that one is like, one works, one doesn't work, one is better, one is worse. It's, it's not that simple. I personally, as a coach, use 
method number one, the keeping sets and reps mostly the same. Small changes do happen. Um, I do make small changes to volume. I do make small changes to um, reps every now and then for people um, during a mesocycle for, for hypertrophy or not. Um, purely because it keeps variables consistent and allows me to manage those variables effectively. As in, if we keep things fairly similar, I'm going to say fairly similar because someone's going to call me out and be exactly the same. No, it's not always the same. Um, but if I keep things the same, let's say I do keep things the same for a four week block or whatever, I can look and see whether that has achieved the results that I wanted, that I desired to get out of that. Um, and that can be for any goal, hypertrophy or not. If it didn't work, or if there were particular parts that didn't work, I can change that. I can add more volume, I can reduce volume um, based on recovery feedback. I can up intensity, lower intensity. Um, I can change exercises. I can do whatever it means necessary to keep progress happening. Um, and if you're measuring data, you can see that happening. Uh, so that's why I like that. Now that's not to say that, like you said, adding load rep sets, whatever, during the cycle is not gonna work. You can still measure that. Um, and during hypertrophy phases, probably less of an issue, it's probably, probably dirt more. Um, uh, it's just that I like the first one just from a coaching point of view. Uh, now, if somebody's coming out of something like a pandemic where they've been doing nothing for a long time or close to nothing or nothing heavy, whatever, then I would take more of a, that adding volume slowly over time approach. Um, I would be slowly pushing in week to week or you know every second week, just a, a set here, a set there, building their system back up to where it was. Um, guarantee after these things, there's gonna be a lot of people injured. There's gonna be a lot of people coming out of this going, fuck yeah, I've had four weeks off the gym, feel amazing, jumping back in onto my old program, boom, five sets of 10, fuck yeah. So it doesn't go to plan. You need to, just as you would taper into competition, taper out of low volume phases as well. Change things slowly. Um, and that goes on all fronts, intensity, volume, all that crap. Uh, good rule of thumb is just like max 10% at a time. Change things 10% at a time, whether it's you're going 50 sets to 55 sets a week, 100 sets, 110 sets a week, uh, increasing intensity in, in that manner as well. If you're a person that does it that way, uh, do things slow. The body is slow to adapt, so we're in no rush. Um, if you're managing data, uh, manipulating data, do it slowly. Uh, I hope that answers your question. But I can expand on that fully maybe in another video because it's a big topic. Uh, favorite back exercise for hypertrophy? Uh, vertical and horizontal pulling. Uh, my favorite ones are those. Um, I'm going to do a row variation or a couple of row variations. A uh, seated wider neutral grip is my favorite. For that, personally, uh, along with uh, laying on an incline bench prone to allow me to stay nice and uh, uh, neutral, less body language in it, laying down on that flat bench and doing a row with dumbbells in that range. That way I can change the position of my hands and it feels really, really good, especially if I can change that incline, get it perfect, real nice. Those two for rows. Um, I just like a general lap pull down. I'm not one of those you know, lap pull down wide to get wide type thing. Not going too close in here. That one doesn't feel great for me as well. Just a nice, just outside shoulder width, pronated for the most part, neutral of as well. Um, grip just uh, allows me to get full range, all that good stuff. Um, as far as uh, uh, unilateral ones go, just the good old one arm dumbbell row without a huge amount of body language. Uh, love it. Uh, and and a, and a half kneeling one arm pull down, love it as well. Uh, for a few other reasons, obviously you can't load them uh, as hard. Um, and to add to that list, face pulls. I particularly like one arm again, a half kneeling one arm. So here, boom, love it. Just for control, I don't want to flare up. It's easier to control with one arm. Love it. Um, and. Then you added for the bench, uh, 
they're all going to carry the bench. There's none of them going to have a direct carry of the bench. Bench is pressing. Back work is, I guess, an ex accessory to that to, to hold you stable, to keep uh, stable in a bench press, whatever you want to call it in that way. Um, so it's not going to have a super direct carry over the bench. Only thing it's going to have a direct carry over the bench is bench. Um, and that's going to be even more specific to the range that you use or the weight that you use and things like that. You're going to adapt in the way that you do it. Um, so bench press, any of this bench work, whatever feels good for you for, for back work, I would do it. I wouldn't say there's like a, or we have to mimic a bench press with our back work. Like, fuck that shit. People <laughs> talking about what I said earlier. It's funny, this has just come up because I'm scrolling down. <laughs> so I've not seen the comments come up as I as I uh, as they come up. Um, but I can reference them back to what you were saying earlier. Uh, what are your favorite, ex from Denver, what are your favorite accessory exercises to maximize bench press? Uh, if we're talking, um, if we're talking like during competition phase, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be bench press. It's going to be bench press variations, close variations of uh, bench press. So close grip, uh, feet up bench, you know, close stuff, close, like get as specific as you can, uh, change variables as little as you can um, to get the max carry over, simple, right? Um, if we're going further away from competition, uh, I can get a bit more, bit more, have a bit more fun with my bench. Uh, so things like, I love my dumbbells. I love being able to change this. Uh, I love not having to be, I love not having to be pinned back. I love not having to be here on my bench press. Just uh, after a competition, last thing I want to do is just jam myself in that, that terrible end range, really uncomfortable position. I love getting my bodybuilder on. I love getting my dumbbell presses on. I love getting my machine presses on. Going deeper than that, I love getting my, um, you know, direct tricep work on, um, pec flies on, love that stuff. Um, I guess you can all call it an accessory to bench to some degree. Um, but I love like an incline press, a dumbbell press, or even a flat dumbbell press. The flat one doesn't do to me because I, I suck at the setup and I crush my face, but the incline one's better for me. Um, and actually holding either a protracted scat position or just not fully retracted position anyway and obviously holding stable through those ranges as well. So holding out here and take my bench through that range like that, obviously focusing on where my pec is getting stretched because obviously I could keep going further and go way back here, but it's not what I want. Um, focusing on pec growth, whatever hypertrophy. So I hold a protracted scat during my dumbbell pressing and just go to where I feel that stretch here. Oh, yeah and then a bit of a squeeze at the top, the good stuff, that mind muscle connection, you know. Um, and yeah, I really I really like that. I, I hold that protracted scap, I hold them long, I reach long, hold that, breathe in, fill this chest. And then I'll go until about that 90 degree point where I feel the pec stretch. Obviously I could keep going further, not useful though. Um, and that's one of my favorite ones for that. It's a dumbbell press, but that's my kind of small take on it. Uh, what's bench grip width determined by e.g. four ounce particular the bar or comfort whatever um, I've never had much success in the whole uh, in the whole like oh we gotta you know measure and it's you know 1.758 um, times your clavicle width or whatever um, never had much success in that uh, I'm usually a person for comfort and for just uh, putting them in a position to obey like the bigger rules. So your ability to stay tight, your ability to keep your elbow under the bar, um, you know, things like that. I'm looking for that. I'm just looking for general kind of bench tightness, stability, whatever rules. Um, not so much like a width that's better or worse. Uh, I will use both. I will, I will use close grip, medium grip, wide grip in my training in different phases. Um, but as far as 1RM, max bench, competition bench, it's going to be just probably where you're comfortable, where it, first of all. Secondly, like kind of how much it beats you up. So if you're close grip, fucks your shoulders up. A, you're probably doing wrong, but B, like just um, 
the, the positions that are going to like beat you up, obviously you want to avoid because you want to maximize volume, you want to maximize adaptions, you want to stress the tissues that you're actually wanting to stress, not a bunch of other tissues like tendons, ligaments, crap like that. Fuck all that off. Um, if that means a chest press for you, cool. Um, for hypertrophy. <clears throat> um, but yeah, choose variations that beat you up the least um, with width. Um, and that's going to get you through a comp because anybody who's done a comp prep knows that when you get really specific like that, if your technique is off, if your position is off, if your stability is off, whatever you want to call it, um, it adds up real quick because you're putting a lot of volume through those big three. Um, so choose the one which you can hold the, the best position with uh, throughout sets and, and overload it. Get work done in that position. If every time you walk off the bench, out of a bench session, your shoulders fucked up, you've done it wrong. Choose a new position, choose a new technique. That might not be the grip width, but it might be. Um, so use use all your, uh, you know, change all those variables to suit the overall picture. Don't just change it because oh yeah, closer grip, more tricep doesn't work like that. It's the whole system thing. Jamal, hi. Stop lifting so heavy. It's embarrassing everybody. Uh, your deadlifts are ridiculous. Um, that's as far as questions go. <laughs> Jamal's taking notes. Fuck off, man. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's well ahead. He knows what he's doing. Um, oh, there are some actual question questions. People are people going to use the question feature, which I have not. Grit with. Yeah, okay, yeah, so Amir asked at the start, the one that I didn't answer, the one that I brought up and then didn't answer, the best practices, the common patterns or whatever you see for bench response to training. I'm just going to talk about that generally because that's where I started to. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you can't bench when you deadlift, you know, a thousand pounds or whatever, Jamal, so it's all right. Just, it's, it, we all, everybody who knows that's watching this knows the deadlift is superior anyway. I just do bench because I need to. I just need to talk about it. It's, it's something that, you know, it's, it is part of powerlifting, whatever, I have to talk about it. But everybody knows the deadlift's king anyway. Uh, first of all, bench is all in the setup. It's just like the deadlift, like I talked about a week ago. It's all in the setup. It's all getting tight. If you're not feeling stupid, uncomfortable, and you want to, you want to, uh, you want you, you know, it's hard to get up off that bench, hard to get out of that locked in tight position in a bench press. Probably doing it wrong. Uh, you should be uncomfortable. You should say tight. Things should be fixed in position. Joints should be fixed um, so that muscles can do their job. If muscles are trying to to contract, like your pecs are trying to contract while your scaps are all moving around, floating around, it's just not going to work. You're never going to get any stronger like that. Um, so we need to learn to fix it, um, preferably retracted in a, in a maximum retracted position. Um, uh, and that's going to cause a lot of shoulder issues. That's going to cause a lot of progress issues. Uh, so focus on that first. Um, and good things will happen. People won't, ask, won't be asking a bunch of these questions about like, why is this hurt? Why is that hurt? Why can't I get stronger? Which grip's better? All that stuff if they just focused on that stuff. Um, you know, trying to figure out the secrets when that's the secret. Uh, I like the light touch approach and technique. I personally like coming down, touching super light, on the chest, not sinking a whole lot. There's ways you can get away with the sinking and obviously people do, um, and they do it really well. Um, but especially when, as a, from a coaching perspective, um, when I'm teaching somebody to bench, it's not the way that I usually go about it. I'll usually go about uh, just touching real light in the chest, teaching to hold through that tension, learning to hold things in position, um, not rush, things like that. That's gonna, be, uh, that's gonna be how I approach it and how I approach teaching it uh, and I think long term that's going to be a better, uh, a better. That's going, that's going to get better uh, results and, and have, be a better experience for most people. Uh, as for the little bit of a heave, a little bit of a sink, um, yeah, it's not a bad thing. It's just not how I would start. You can develop that over time as you get better at it. Uh, and with that, touching in the same spot sounds simple. Sounds very simple still see it all the time when people even within a rep uh within a set or more commonly over multiple sets they touch in here then the next rep touches here then the next rep touches here um slightly different so making sure you touch in the right spot watch videos film yourself i mean simple stuff but i've often overlooked and yeah and they're, they're just some general tips i wanted to go through on that uh as, as far as warm-ups for bench day i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm going to leave that. I'm going to do my, I'm going to do a video, a YouTube video of my current warm up. 
uh, for, I guess, all my lifts. It doesn't change that much, to be honest. Only, like, one thing changes in them. Um, but my general, like, movement uh, prep for squat benching and deadlifting, for training in general, I'm going to do a YouTube video on. Um, it is specific to me. It does address my particular issues. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so I, I don't think... It, it's hard for me to put that stuff out because I, I know that people are just going to be like, fuck yeah, Will does it, so I'm going to do it. it. It isn't like that. I have different things. I have a different structure. I have different problems to you. Um, I have things that I can improve on in different ways to you. Uh, so I don't want, I'm not putting it out there for people to copy exactly, but maybe to give some ideas, drive some thoughts, for people to do, go and do their own research on this stuff that I do and work out whether it's for them. Uh, like I said, at the start of this video, uh, we always want to be testing and retesting when it comes to movement prep stuff. So we want to be testing whatever range we're trying to improve or whatever, whatever like function we're trying to improve upon and do the thing that we think will improve that and then measure it again. So making sure your stuff is measurable um, and the, the movement prep actually improves those things. Uh, so yeah, I will film mine. Not guaranteeing that they will work for you though. Um, all right, talked enough about bench. I think I talked on bench longer than deadlifts, which is just not cool by any means. Um, but I've addressed most of the things I think. Hopefully people got some value out of this. If there's any more questions, uh, shoot me a private message. Or on Friday, every Friday, I do a QA. and a um, And if you want to ask specific questions specific to you, um, do them there. Um, that's on every topic, not just bench, but you can do it, ask questions on there. And if you want to, I'm happy to, uh, for people to send me like a short clip of their bench press or what's going on or whatever. Um, and I will try and help you specifically on that, on the Friday. These, these, are uh, these lives on a Tuesday morning, are um, kind of set topics and, and I had, like I've done, I've answered the questions within it to some degree, but they're a little bit more broader on the Friday Q and A. Obviously I can look at questions previously, uh, have a look over them, have a look over video. So if you have a one for you, shoot it across to me, shoot me a question on Thursday, Friday, whenever I put up the box and I'll do my best to answer then. So thanks everybody. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you then.